Back now again with Gary Tucker and advancing with watercolor. Today we're going to further our knowledge of a center of interest and how to create it through a focus on shapes. Uh, we're using Paris again as our motif. This is a, a image of Notre Dame and the main venue that runs uh, along the Seine River looking towards Notre Dame in the early morning light. You can see Notre Dame quite clearly and in the lower section there's a lot of things going on, a lot of busyness uh, detracting a little bit from our center of interest. So we're going to do a few things. Number one, we're going to zoom in to our motif so that the uh, buildings of Notre Dame have a stronger presence uh, we're using a vertical to make more of that in the paper size and we're going to do some things to simplify the foreground a little bit but to start things off uh, we're going to return to um, graded washes and the first application that I'm making is in the sky area uh, this will be behind everything but I want to do a very uh, mm, quiet sky, a bit of a graded wash going from a pale cobalt blue drifting down into a yellow ochre. I have my paper, paper at a strong vertical and I'm going to uh, tilt it even more when I want it to run down. Now you can see here I'm spraying the paper and asking it to run down and create that sort of transition from one color to another in a very smooth and uninterrupted way. This is the strength of a graded wash as we can get these nice subtle transformations that reveal themselves even more when the, the painting is finished. So we're doing an underpainting, placing some of the lighter tones. I've placed a, a warm gray into the street area. I'm placing some uh, cadmium red light as you see now with my mop brush uh, creating the underpainting for the awnings and under the awnings and then that will be left to dry so uh, what we try to take care of in this underpainting is to create oh the um, the lighter notes that we're going to highlight with hard edges in the next stage you can see here I'm using same brush big mop brush one of the things that I try to do is work uh, with a large brush as long as possible because I find it keeps me thinking in terms of simplicity, in terms of calligraphy, and does not let me um, run into too much trouble in getting too detailed too soon. And especially useful on creating this sort of silhouetted version of the Notre Dame where we can paint the buildings very freely, just uh, trying to be mindful of the <clears throat> the contour, the edge of the shape. Um, and as we do that, we can add a little nuances to the side and to the top. And um, as I bring this wash down, this is one large wash also, I, I add a bit more water to the midsection. My strategy here is I'm going to be painting some dark objects in front of that, some windows into that, and I want to, there to feel like there's a nice airy space uh, behind uh, the wall of the street and beyond the street and beyond this building that's close to us. So this is helping me to create a feeling of air um, and depth in the painting. And I'm going to add some accents to the top of Notre Dame just to give a little more strength, a little more uh, interest up on top and in terms of uh, my center of interest I'm working on that right now. I'm, it's, uh, I'm interested in the profile of Notre Dame and I want that to be sort of the first thing you recognize uh, when you look at the building. I also want you to enjoy some of the transitions within the building. I want you to enjoy some of the sky peeking through the, the balusters and other ornamentation of Notre Dame. And I also want it to have a sort of austerity, a, a massiveness, which you feel when you're standing in Saint-Germain looking towards Notre Dame. 
Uh, so this first wash is, is basically, basically complete. I'm going to let it dry, but you can see the graded effect that I've achieved in, in painting the profile of Notre Dame. I'm extending the blue now down into the, um, the place where, uh, the street where vendors set up shops where they're selling prints and souvenirs primarily for those who are visiting Paris. Uh, there's a note of a car and now I've begun a much warmer wash um, coming down uh, down into the awning area. All this I want to definitely come in front of Notre Dame and in fact as a idea for composition, composition I'm using this uh, uh, just the edge of this building and the lower section to kind of frame Notre Dame. We'll talk about that a little later, some of the uh, means of composing that are available to artists. Some of these ideas have been around for centuries and still function very well. The more you, you study the masters and the more you read from what they left behind, the more you'll learn about composition and tools and methods that are available to you to make your painting easier to read, uh, stronger, more impactful, and in some sense also easier to compose. So you see me working with that same big brush, joining all these little marks, leaving little gaps here and there that uh, would possibly be through windows or uh, reflections on the surface of the road, shadows, all this stuff, I'm trying to paint it uh, as one. My working thought is that this is one unit. Uh, so I place a, a shadow going across and then add figures on top of that, joining, joining, joining. This is one <clears throat> skill that the artist employs a lot that's a big departure from the way that we normally look at the world. We're very good at seeing things separately individually apart from each other somehow that has served us well in our evolution and and that's how our vision our daily vision tends to function we see the difference in things it doesn't matter if it's nearby or far away we're very keen on separating things but the artist um, must look at their scene at least in the initial stages and almost to the end um, finding ways to join similar objects. Those objects may be people standing, the front of a car, the shadow, a bicycle, an awning. Uh, finding a way to join those. And usually there's a, a tonality that can be used to join objects like this. Uh, sometimes it's by means of color. But this joining is a very important part of the artist's vision. When they look at their subject, you'll see them squinting very often. It's, the squinting is helping the artist to join uh, objects and which are similar in value and he's going to paint them or she's going to paint them as though they were one. And this gives <clears throat> this gives a certain integrity to, to the painting. It also helps to uh, again focus on that center of interest. If we paint everything with clarity, these figures, the bicycle, the car, the lamppost, your eye would be bouncing all over the pit, uh, all over the painting. And this uh, joining of uh, like, uh, like darks or images or objects that look similar, this joining helps to simplify the composition, simplify the design, and make it easier to to focus on that center of interest. So here we have a possible distraction with all the beautiful windows that appear in the lower third of Notre Dame. Um, it's a tricky point, how much to emphasize those. It is an iconic building, so you want to show some of it. And uh, the balancing point is how much can you put in without um, distracting the audience. So I'm I'm playing with that right now. And uh, the lower section where you see all these uh, figures and uh, a car and there'll be more things added to it later. Again, I'm looking for ways to join them, uh, keeping the edges kind of similar, soft, 
keeping the tonalities and the colors dark and muted. And this helps me to to drive the eye where I want it to go in the painting and reveal hopefully that uh, that section that I was mentioning earlier in the the towers of Notre Dame. Yeah, and some things to think about when you're placing your center of interest. It's it's a very good place to consider before you start your painting. Am I going to use a horizontal, the landscape format? Am I going to use the portrait format of the paper? Am I going to use a square? This first decision as to the shape uh, you're going to employ is very important. And uh, you saw the first image we saw was more of a landscape image. And later, after zooming in, we could use the portrait uh, orientation of the paper and get a much more stronger representation of Notre Dame. So that's, uh, that dictates how you'll be able to design the shapes. And then it's worthwhile to consider how, how the shapes are going to be um, used to coordinate around a center of interest. What I'm using as a compositional stem in this painting is a inverted L. I don't know if you can see an L uh, created by the right hand building and coming across the whole foreground joining to figures and a bicyclist. Uh, it's forming basically an L shape and this is called an inverted L. It's a compositional stem that's been around for a long time and very useful in um, creating a, or directing the eye to a center of interest. Now what happens as a result of this lower dark element, the, the inverted L, is we notice the towers of Notre Dame even more. So that's the um, purpose of simplifying, of looking at your subject and seeing ways to join tonalities which are similar, shapes which are similar, and grouped. Um, and it's a, a good example of using this compositional stem, the inverted L. Uh, Edgar Payne wrote a wonderful book, um, Composition for Landscape Artists. And I'm going to show you just a couple pages from that book that show several uh, compositional stems, the um, steel yard, the balance, the O, the S, the L. Um, these are compositional stems or frameworks that help the artist to distinguish their center of interest and give a certain stability to the composition that they choose. Here you see the triangle, the cross, the radiant lines, the L, and the grouped mass. There's many, well, first of all, you can see I've kind of gone over my image with a dark uh, element so that you could see the inverted L more clearly. This is what I meant by inverted L. Anyway, when a, you embark on a study of composition, I can highly recommend that you look at Edgar Payne's book and study some of the compositional stems that he outlines. I believe that this will be helpful in your painting experience.